Hello and welcome again to Chair Red Radio. I'm Ian McNay and I'm joined, as usual, by Professor John Reed. Hello. And Matt Ingham. And we're going we're gonna to entertain you for the next two hours and hopefully you're going to really enjoy our mixture of Trey Red releases, lots of new exciting compilations as well as some, some new releases that are not connected with the label as such. So we're going to start with Second Layer and Courts of War. That was Second Layer with Courts of War. And the reason I played that as a starting point is that the Chemical Brothers have sampled that track for their latest single called No Reason, which we'll play now. Thank you. 
that was Chemical Brothers, No Reason, which had a sample in there from uh, Second Layer's Courts of War. And of course, Second Layer is, a, is an act we were, we were very fond of at Trey Red because um, that was Adrian Borland and, and Graham Bailey were, were Second Layer. And Adrian Borland was a good friend of Trey Red many, many moons ago. And he went on to, uh, he started off, I should say, with The Outsiders, which we've, uh, we've reissued their catalogue. And then he went on to form The Sound, which was just a, such a brilliant band, very creative. And sadly, uh, sadly he died, Adrian, in um, April 1999. And that Courts of War single was going to be Cherry 21. And if you look through the old catalogue, you'll find a gap at Cherry 21. And I don't remember the reason why it didn't come out, but it did originally come out originally on uh, Torch Records, as an EP track. And I'm just going to read you something that I didn't write this, but it's just someone writing about the second layer as opposed to the sound. And they said this, while the sound had songs of glooming, gloomy introspection and a sweeping romanticism, second layer strips all of that away, leaving in its place a monochrome worldview morbidly obsessed with the dehumanising effect of war, nuclear weapons annihilation, and the fracturing and negation of the self within an increasing distorted and technology-mediated society. Well, that track was recorded oh, over 40 years ago, and of course, sadly, things haven't changed that much. Anyway, we'll move on to something more positive, and uh, here's Matt Ingham. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, I'd like to play a couple of new songs, actually, for you. These are from brand new albums, um, both out uh, on Cherry Red. One has just come out, which is the new Hawkwind album, The Future Never Waits. And then the next one is out uh, relatively soon. It's Per Ubu's new album, Trouble on Big Beat Street. So I'm going to play you first the, the Hawkwind track, which is called Rama the Prophecy, followed swiftly by Worried Man Blues by Per Ubu. After I'm gone, your earth will be free to live out its miserable span of existence as one of my satellites. And that's how it's going to be.
across the Mississippi on US 49, heading east. In Clarksdale, US 49 intersects Highway 61, and that is the crossroads of blues legend. Robert Johnson supposedly sold his soul to the devil. Pablo Picasso never sold his soul to the devil, but a black guy from the Delta, I guess that's got to be the explanation. Anyway, on one corner is a laundromat, the Devil May Care Quickie Mat. In the window is a sign, lay it down, suds it up. Across the road is a Popeye fried chicken. I go in the drive through lane and stop at the menu board. A voice from the speaker says, How, how, how may I serve you? I order a three-piece chicken dinner with hush puppies and a Sprite. How, how, how do you want that chicken? Extra crispy, I say, and proceed to the pickup window. Howlin' Wolf leans out with a neatly folded bag dwarfed in his fist. Driving off, I remember the pecan pie slice I wanted to order. I park and go inside. Robert Zimmerman and Alan Lomax wait behind the counter. Muddy Waters, wearing the manager's badge, is bussing tables. A song is playing on the jukebox. On each link, initial of my name. Fix a word, man. The same word song. judge what might be my crime judge tell me what is my fire son it's 21 years on the soda mountain line train she ride 16 coaches long the train she rides. Sixteen coaches long. The girl is on the train. The 
Anyone ask you who composed that song? Anyone ask you who composed that song? Tell them twice. Now. So that track was Worried Man Blues by Per Uber, and before that you heard Rama the Prophecy from Auckland, both uh, brilliant albums, and both playing live across the country this year, so um, go and have a look. And I'll now pass back over to Ian. So The Damned have a new album out, and it's called Darkadelic on Adele Records. It's actually their 12th album. And... Uh, this is a track I've selected. It's not the first single, but it's a track called Western Promise.
Ireland's Western Promise, uh, one of the slower tracks on the album. The rest of it's a much more high energy. And I'm going to pass right back now to Matt again. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, it's a great track, that, and a good album. Um, I'm going to play a track from The Fall. Um, we are still acquiring catalogue from Marky e. Smith's group. Uh, it's, and it's always exciting when we do uh, acquire some more records from his sort of venerable catalogue. Um, and this track is quite a big track among four fans, um, and also, I suppose, football fans. This is from the latest album that we've acquired, which is called Country on the Click, a.k.a. the Real New Fall LP album. Um, and this is theme from Sparta FC. was theme from Sparta FC by The Fall and from one Manchester legend to another. I'm going to pass back over to John Reid. Pure professionalism. Keep in Control, independent music from Manchester 1977 to 1981, is a new three-CD set, available pop pickers from all good music stores, and it follows a seven-CD collection we did called Manchester North of England some years ago, five years ago, six years ago. 
This particular compilation centres around uh, an organisation called the Manchester Musicians Collective that was set up uh, by the likes of Dick Witts, uh, who was later in uh, The Passage, and various other folks, including a friend of ours called Louise Alderman. And so the Manchester Musicians Collective was fundamental in helping uh, aspiring new acts, not least of all, who you just heard, uh, really get a platform in, in by live shows and uh, demo facilities in and around Manchester. So compilation includes many of the bigger acts that emerged from uh, God's Greatest City at that time, Buzzcocks, Joy Division, uh, and so on, and various people who went on to become famous, like Mick Hucknell, who was in a band called Frantic Elevators. So we're going to hear three tracks from Keeping Control, which, by the way, is named after the Man Manchester Musicians Collective magazine uh, at the time. We're going to hear Orgasm Addict, which was the first major label single by Buzzcocks once they'd signed to United Artists. Um, then we're going to hear a track from Manchester Mekon, Must Have More Wheels. This was a group entirely central to the Manchester Musicians Collective. And then we'll f uh, wrap up with Sketch for Summer by Factory Signing Jurity Column. Well, you tried it just for once, find it all right for kicks. But now you find out that it's a habit that sticks and you're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. Sneaking in the back door with dirty magazines. So your mother wants to know what all the stains on the jeans. And you're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. But you still keep a beat and you meet to pulp and you're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. You're a kick us and over, you're a no chose effort. Live on a fucking yourself to death. Orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. You're making out with school kids. Butchers, assistants, and bell hops. You found them all here and there. Children of God and the joy strings. International women with nobody here. Ooh, so well, you're asking in an alley and your voice ain't steady. The sex mechanics are off, you're more than ready. You're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. Johnny won't fuck you always and always. He's got the energy he will remain. He's an orgasm addict. He's an orgasm addict. He's always at it. He's always at it. 
you heard three tracks from a new three CD box set available called Keep in Control, Independent Music from Manchester 77 to 81, Orgasm Addict by Buzzcocks, uh, Must Have More Wheels by Manchester Mekon, and Juicy Column Sketch for Summer. From one great northern city to another northern city, handing back to Ian to chat about Let's Stomp. Okay, well, we're going to talk about Liverpool, probably the greatest northern city uh, in terms of music, what they produced anyway. Um, and this is an interesting box set called Stomp. And the, let's uh, Stomp. Let's, let's Stomp, I stand corrected. Mersey Beyond, 1962 to 1969. And on there, it's just a fascinating collection. I think actually this three CD is probably a hundred tracks, or even just over a hundred tracks. And there's people like the the Big Three, the Undertakers, the Searchers, Lee Curtis, Bell, Beryl Marsden, Joni Pace, Pacemakers, the Swinging Blue Jeans, the Foremost, Lava Birds. So some great, interesting artists on there. And I've actually selected three to play, three tracks to play, which are, I'll play them back to back, The Chance, I Don't Care, The Searchers, When You Walk in the Room, and then Bill Kenwright and The Runaways, I Want to Go Back There Again. And here they are. to 
just heard three tracks from the new uh, Mosey Beat and Beyond box set, Let's Stomp, uh, The Chance I Don't Care, The Searchers, When You Walk in the Room, and Bill Kenwright and The Runaways, I Want to Go Back There Again. Three, lots of fascinating tracks on this compilation. The Chance, of course, uh, well not of course really, maybe people don't know, but they eventually evolved into hit disco act The Real Thing in the 70s, and The Chance might be, I couldn't swear to it, but the first all-black uh, now they weren't the first uh, all black vocal group but they were certainly notable in Liverpool uh, their backing band were the Beatles before they became famous and they made a handful of singles that were excellent I guess in a kind of do what meets early soul kind of style had some modest success but never really broke through and it took obviously another 10 years before the Amu brothers well I think it was only one of the Amu brothers in the chance but eventually to enjoy success the searchers amongst other things were pioneered really a sort of British answer to folk rock and When You Walk in the Room is a classic example of that Jackie DeShannon song and Bill Camright uh, perhaps better known these days as being owner of, of Everton FC no he's not the owner oh, he's not the anymore. owner he's a chairman is he he's the chairman he chairman. sold it yeah okay yeah uh, but was intrinsically involved as a, as a, I think, a songwriter and a, and a performer back in the day in the 60s. So the, lo, those three tracks, just three of many that you'll hear on Let's Stomp. Fascinating compilation. And keeping it uh, all things 60s, we're now moving on to uh, a track from our new Heinz 5 CD. For those who don't know, uh, a few years ago we acquired the mythical two chess tapes, um, basically... Uh, uh, a, a catchment of tapes that included many, many thousands of Joe Meek recordings from back in the day, most of which were previously unreleased. And the Heinz 5 CD is actually our first sort of CD compilation from those tapes. We spent two or three years painstakingly digitising them. We're going to hear, a, I suppose, a lesser known track by Heinz, not one of his hits, but one of his tougher later tracks. This is Digging My Potatoes, and this is the original speed because many of the tracks that Joe released were speeded up. And this is Digging My Potatoes as it was originally recorded. I've got that funny feeling I'm gonna make her mine 
Digging My Potatoes by Heinz, who'd obviously made his name with the Tornadoes prior to that and then launched uh, a solo career and enjoyed some, some chart success. We're moving on to the 70s now and uh, a very obscure track by a group called Rosie. Um, Rosie included a chap called Rick Sharp who'd been in, in various jobbing bands. I guess you would describe them as a... Yeah, a sort of uh, journeyman glam rock group in the early 70s. Nothing was released at the time, but various tracks came out later. And uh, such is the nature of these things that this track, Rosie's Coming to Town, uh, has actually been picked up for use in a high-profile uh, TV series, The Hunters, which stars Al Pacino basically as, uh, I guess you call him a Nazi hunter, really. Uh, so it's a kind of a weird fictional uh, larger than life TV series into its second season. So here's Rosie with Rosie's Coming to Town. heard Rosie's Coming to Town by Rosie and I'll hand back to Ian to chat about a couple of new releases. Yeah we like to try and play you some some new tracks by um, artists that are not involved with Cherry Red and the first one I'm going to play is Natalie Merchant, Come on Aphrodite. 
Come on, Afro Daddy, you got me so long. Come on, Afro Daddy, from that mountain above. Come on, Afro Daddy, I'm begging you, begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, Afro Daddy, can't you see that I've been patient? Come on, Afro Daddy, can't you see how long I've waited? Come on, Afro Daddy, can't you see that I'm wasting? I'm wasting away. Won't you come from the sea? Won't you come from the sea? Oh, appear to me. Won't you come from the sea? Won't you come from the sea? Oh, appear to me. Come on, Aphrodite, see me down on my knees. Down on my knees. Come on, Aphrodite, part the waves for me.
That was Natalie Merchant, Come and Aphrodite. And it's interesting because I said not involved with Cherry Red, but she very nearly was because I remember years ago being at the uh, music business um, extravaganza in uh, Cannes, the south of France, called Medem, where everybody used to go for uh, exchanging information and uh, doing deals with people around the world. And I, at that, that time, she was in a band called, singing in a band called 10,000 Maniacs. And I actually shook hands on a deal where Trey Red would license the rights for the first 10,000 Maniacs album for Europe. That was Secrets of the I Ching, wasn't it? It was indeed. Wow, that was going to come out on Cherry Red. I never knew it that. It was. And uh, the, uh, I thought I'd done the deal. And then, of course, I got home and the guy got a better deal from somebody else. It never came out on Trey Red. But I always liked her voice. And that track I just played is from her ninth solo album. And uh, it's called, the album's called Keep Your Courage. Another excellent album from her. She must have made about 20 albums altogether now. Very prolific. And then there's somebody else that's very interesting who's been around uh, quite a long time. And the act's called Blackmore's Nights. And that is uh, Richie Blackmore and Candice Knight. And I'll play you the track first, which is Ocean Gypsy.
That was Ocean Gypsy by Blackmore's Knights. And Blackmore's Knights are essentially two people, Richie Blackmore and Candy's Knight, who's his wife. And Richie Blackmore is most famous for being in Deep Purple and Rainbow, but he was originally in an act called The Outlaws, who were produced by Joe Meek, who, uh, who John mentioned earlier. And um, they, they very much specialise, uh, Richie and Candy's, in Renaissance music. And uh, that track, Ocean Gypsy, is from the latest album called Shadow of the Moon. And talking of Renaissance music, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Matt Ingham to talk about a track by Renaissance. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, we enjoy working with Annie Haslam and the members of Renaissance on a lot of their back catalogue. And one that's coming out recently is their Song for All Seasons vinyl which is coming out on, on vinyl uh, after preceding the three CD edition that we did a few years ago. I'm going to play their sort of top 10 hit single from that time, 1978, which is called Northern Lights.
That was Northern Lights by Renaissance. And then back to Ian. So as we record this, which is beginning of May, um, shall I say the year? The year is 2023. Um, I don't know when you'll be hearing it, obviously, but that, that, is, uh, that is today, 2nd of May, 2023. And Everything But The Girl had a new album, which has gone out, has gone out and went out last week, and is number three in the album chart, which is their biggest album chart entry, I think, ever. And of course, they started their career many moons ago, must be over 40 years ago now, with Trey Red. We originally signed uh, Tracy Thorne as part of the Marine Girls and Ben Watt as a solo artist. And they got together and formed everything but the girl. And it's been a working and romantic relationship since then. And here's the track they originally recorded for us all those years ago called Night and Day. That was Night and Day by Everything But The Girl. And here's Matt Ingham again. Thanks, Ian. I'm going to play you um, a brand new track now. This is by a chap called Ben Reed. He's got an album called Bandaged coming out on Esoteric Antenna at the end of the month. Um, He's uh, well known as a sort of session musician, as a live musician. He's played with artists like Frank Ocean um, and Sampha. So some quite sort of um, well-known names. And he is now onto his third solo album, of which we're releasing. This is the first single taken from that album, which shows his sort of singer-songwriter side. But it's very, it's got a prog element to it, the sort of Canterbury scene. It's got um, Jimmy Hastings from Caravan guesting on the album, not this track, but on the album. So this is Backward Glance by Ben Reed. Today, memories and days 
scattered to the wind, you and I underline. Actions play their part and ripple to the shore. Share a Bible glance to a time we hold so dear. Old photos and souvenirs didn't turn out how we planned, but it looks like we're still here. The reason is crystal clear. Many plans. Again. Dreams of future days captured on the breeze, passing times, grand designs. Setbacks on the road, such a heavy load. Self-avowed, paired back to the wild, rekindled in the fire, discovery, recovery, sent back to the start, we withdraw the charm and share a backward dance to the time that we hold. That was Backward Glance by Ben Reed, and from something brand new to something that still feels brand new, we are doing a reissue soon of Chris Squire's um, Fish Out of Water album. This is a vinyl edition cut at Abbey Road Studios. Sounds fantastic. I'm not going to play... I think there were two singles from that album, Lucky Number 7 and Silently Falling. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to play my favourite song from that album, which is called You By My Side. That was You By My Side by Chris Squire. And now I'm going to hand back over to Ian. Thank you. So Wishbone Ash used to be a band that I loved. And in fact, I still love them. And there are two versions out these days uh, on the road. And uh, 
I've seen both versions the last couple of years. They're both great. And their favourite album, their biggest album, was, of course, Argus. And that has been reissued by, I think it's Snapper Records, um, with some bonus tracks. And I'm going to play my favourite track from the Argus album, The King Will Come.
That was The King Will Come by Wispo Nash. And the original album, when it came out in April 1972, got to number three in the album chart and stayed around for a long, long time. And for people that are really big Wispo Nash fans, there's a 32 CD box set which Snapper put out, which I have a copy at home, which I must confess I do dig into now and again and pick a couple of albums out. So many great albums they made. And talking about, I don't know if you call it a great album, but an album that I love currently is uh, the new album by John Cale called Mercy. And I'm going to play a track from that called Moonstruck, in brackets, Nico's Soul.
That was Moonstruck, Nico's song by John Cale. It's um, off his new album called Mercy, and it's about Nico. And of course, they were both in the Velvet Underground together. And I just thought I would read you the lyrics. They're not too bad. I didn't, I didn't quite get the meaning of all the lyrics, but they're quite, they're quite interesting, as, as always, John Cale is. Moonstruck, moonstruck, you're a moonstruck junkie lady, staring at your feet, breathing words into an envelope to be opened on your death. And miles and miles and miles and miles. Do the waltz and then the overture in the belly of the beast. Please console me. Yes, please hold me. I have come to make my peace. And miles and miles and miles and miles. Want to take the day, want to take the night. And you can see what's in front of you. Doesn't matter, you're broke. And looking for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles to go and miles and miles away. Don't be afraid of this life. Be afraid of this life. Well, that's the lyrics from the song I just played. Um, Moonstruck Nico's song by John Cale. I don't quite understand those lyrics, but they're intriguing. Now, keeping things slightly um, eccentric, Leicester Square uh, was in the office uh, quite recently, also known as uh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is his real name. Leicester Square, of course, was the guitarist, guitarist in the early days of the monochrome set. He was a founder member of Adam and the Ants, He's still uh, an occasional musician, um, still loves his music, but um, he's also doing many other projects uh, these days. And he, he gave me an album, which is a new album, which is Leicester Square and Friends, called Taps. And I'm going to play a track called The Thing Is, There Is No Thing. See what you think of this. This is definitely out of the box. Look, here's the thing, okay? Now, don't interrupt like you always do. Like, I don't know if I attract crazy guys or if I'm attracted to them, but I just wind up with them and I'm in denial because they're crazy until like 4,000 people tell me they're crazy or do some crazy shit that I can't deny. All right, so like the first guy, he was a Southern gentleman, like really nice, an actor, and all actors, you know, they're a little bit crazy because they always have to be somebody else, except this guy was so gorgeous. He was like in some play where nobody hardly said anything. They just stood there on stage waiting for shit to happen. And to be honest, I didn't really get it. And he was like wearing a diaper, which is so not a good look, but oh my God, he had a body to die for, even in a diaper. Like he wasn't incontinent or anything like that. It was just to do with the play. Anyway, he took me out for sushi, which was very, very cultured. Raw fish, you know, then in those days, it was like a new thing. So I was hanging out with like a billion gay guys at the time and like half of them called me from a phone box from the village, you know, and said they saw the diaper guy being really gay and those really short shorts and I was like, no way, he loves me. And one guy said he was licking an ice cream cone in short shorts with three other homos, so like how gay is that? So, you know, he wasn't crazy, he was just gay, but he went crazy when his southern parents decided to send him to a hospital to de-gay him. And then he was no longer gay, just crazy, and got married for like four times. And then, when my marriage broke up, I tracked him down and I called him and I thought, maybe, maybe he's not crazy anymore, maybe he's not gay anymore. So I told him my whole story and how I never stopped loving him and he said he had 
wonderful news just like that wonderful wonderful and I thought it was so cute you know so sudden but guess what the wonderful news was I thought it was gonna be that he was also single and still in love with me despite the ice cream thing and all the weddings he goes Jesus loves you and I was like oh so then I met this other guy I met him I can't remember how but he was crazy jealous which was like a slight turn on but got boring after five minutes so we've been together some time and one day instead of coming over the normal way you know because he had a key he swung over on a rope like Tarzan from the roof of the next building like what I mean, I think he smashed into the window, which was locked, and I didn't even notice, which is kind of stupid, but I'd been to Victoria's Secret that day to get some nice underwear. And I was checking out the stuff, you know, and then blam, this body against my window. Anyway, the super of the building shouted at me the next day, and he told me I had to tell my boyfriend to come in the normal way and not the Tarzan way. Except then he died. Not from smashing into the window. He just died of a heart attack. And I kind of loved him. So the third guy, right? He had kind of the right to be crazy because he killed a kid in Afghanistan. Like, that's bad. You know, whatever the war was, I can't remember. It was to do with Afghanistan, but he became a cop when he left Afghanistan. And at first he had to deal with the gangs, and he kind of liked that. They were exciting, and when they weren't killing each other, they were kind of nice guys, you know? But then, 9-11 happened, and he had to dig up the bodies for like a week. And that really fucked him up. He found this uh, lady's arm with nail polish on it, and he carried it around with him looking for the rest of the body. And then he got that weird cancer that all the diggers got, and he died. But before he died, I used to tell him about that first guy in the play in the diaper to cheer him up. And then I went out with somebody weirder than he was, though, you know, come to think of it, it was just a different kind of weird. And he loved that story, and he kind of used to recreate it. He used to pretend to be gay in a diaper. This is even before he went, like, really crazy. So it wasn't him at all. He was like a macho 9-11 guy who dug up an arm. But being the diaper guy was his party piece, you know, before he got sick and stuff. So, you know, I think there's something to it at, that the last crazy guy imitated the first crazy guy. Except for the gay one and not gay one. You know, they're all dead. You know, I wonder if he could die from being crazy. You know, I need some coffee right now, all right? That was The Thing Is, There Is No Thing by Leicester Square and Friends from an album called, the forthcoming album called Taps. I know it's a bit weird. I hope you managed to last the four minutes, the, the full six minutes and one second. And uh, I like it and the whole album is quite intriguing, very different. And now I will pass you back to Manchester's finest, Professor John Reed, who's going to talk about Someone else who lives in Manchester. Joe yeah, Wobble, oh, yeah, it's certainly on near Stockport, to be more precise. Mr. Jar Wobble, friend of Cherry Red. Uh, we've released lots of his stuff down the years. Um, for a new four CD compilation, we've focused on music from the 21st century, which bizarrely, when we thought about it, is actually half of his career. But I guess it's the nature of the way that things are perceived that the early period in an artist's career is often the one that's most focused on and but Wobble um, has been extremely prolific down the years uh, and in some many many years he's been putting out two or three albums maybe for different labels and uh, so we thought it was, it was good good time to shine a light on if you like his more recent recording or the second half of his career and so we're going to play the title track from said new 4CD 
uh, which Wobble's been intrinsically involved with. Uh, this is called Dark Luminosity. just heard Dark Luminosity, which we all felt was the perfect title for a new four CD set commemorating the second half of Jar Wobble's career, that is to say recordings from the 21st century. And we're going to finish with actually a first, a debut single um, by a band called Chapter House. Now I remember hearing this, I was at the Marquee circa 1990 and seeing some band that I don't recall and this track came on with this really, this sort of looping uh, psychedelic guitar riff. And I just thought it was amazing and went out and bought it very quickly. And that band were Chapter House and the track is Falling Down. 
And uh, this is featured, I think there are more than one version actually, on a new multi-CD box set, which to all intents and purposes includes the complete output of Chapter House. This is falling down from said box set. So you just heard the single version, uh, the first release by Chapter House, who were very much part of that whole uh, Thames Valley shoegaze, I guess it got nicknamed shoegaze scene. Um, they sort of evolved a more dancey, sort of blissed out sound, but that first track is very psychedelic and I loved it at the time and still do. And that just about wraps up the latest edition of Cherry Red Radio. Hope you enjoyed the show and uh, check in with us soon. <laughs>